I'm Bob Dennison. I'm 45 years old, and I'm the president of the greatest yacht brokerage company in the world called Dennison Yachting. We have a great responsibility uh, as a company and as a family uh, to constantly look back on the things that my parents and grandparents and my uncles and just those that went before us uh, did and the sacrifices they made and especially it's very true part of who we are uh, to make sacrifices for our employees, to make sacrifices for our clients and we're constantly uh, looking back at my grandparents uh, and those that went before us as a good example uh, of how to do that in real life. When we first started the company, uh, on the broker side of the company, I was selling yachts and I quickly found out that I was not good at it. I'm a terrible salesperson and I was drawn to other parts of the business, uh, very much focused on marketing, management, operation, and immediately when I started doing those things, I felt like the wind was at my back. And so I loved doing it back then, which would have been about 20 years ago. I don't think I've sold a yacht in 20 years and I've been focused on the other things. And to this day, 20 years later, I still enjoy that the most. I come to work every day thankful uh, that I'm not a yacht broker. Uh, not because yacht brokers, uh, that job isn't fun. I just wasn't very good at it myself. And so when I come to work every day, all I do is think about how can we support our employees? How do we support our yacht brokers and make working at Denison a really cool, fun thing to do. Yeah, so the world is changing constantly. I mean, every single day, I think we all have our cell phones that give us these alerts like throughout the day. And they are, whether it's a news event, it could be an alert on marketing trends I'm following, uh, but we're constantly paying attention to not only the broader kind of world around us, but also our industry very specifically. Um, and we are obsessed and paranoid with making sure that our client experience is a really good one. So anytime there's some pivot or anytime that there's some introduction of a new technology, we try to figure it out with the hat on of if we were a client, how could this technology make our boating or yachting experience better? We figure out how to make that happen. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that our team does really well uh, to allow us as a company to continue to grow. We've had, I think just like every other yacht brokerage and charter company, have clients that demand uh, things that are not probably uh, very common. And I think that's part of the joy of it. It's very easy when you're in that position to complain or roll your eyes about it, but it is exhilarating to get a request from a client uh, that's unusual and figure out a way to make that happen and to be a very uh, happy moment for a client. I was actually just talking to a charter client yesterday uh, and they had a fantastic 50th birthday experience and they brought their friends. It was a tandem charter, a few different boats, and part of the request uh, from the wife was to have his favorite singer join as a surprise. And just the logistic part of not only having that singer, that artist join the party, but making sure that that uh, singer was a part of the charter experience and logistically just pulling it off was a little bit unusual, but it was a lot of fun for us to do. And I think it was one of those moments that allowed that charter experience and a moment that created a 50th birthday sort of like magic thing for that client. And we're thrilled to do that. Well, I was actually on a charter myself with some friends uh, and we were on the back of a catamaran in uh, St. Thomas and it was one of those awkward times. It's kind of like splitting a check at dinner and we were trying to figure out who was going to pay for what gratuity and we were all sort of, and it was a Sunday afternoon and uh, right around then, I think this was 2015, so this would have been seven years ago, uh, we had one of the friends said, you know what, uh, don't worry about sending me a, a wire or a check does anybody here have Bitcoin? And we could just settle up right now. Uh, and it was like a light bulb went off. Uh, and so for us, I was thinking about a charter guest, which led into uh, sales clients. And does this thing called cryptocurrency, like could it actually be something that would make paying for a yacht charter perhaps, or buying a boat easier and better? And for us as a company, we always try to go to where our clients are and not be the type of people that would say, no, you have to wire us money in US dollars or euros. Here's our wiring instructions. And it has to be this way because this is the way the industry says it has to be. We want to create opportunities and make things easier for our clients. So cryptocurrency was one of those things that we did just to make the transaction easier for those clients that we have that are investors of cryptocurrency and our holders of cryptocurrency. We wanted to make sure that that was easy for them. We just closed on our 13th uh, and actually very soon to be 14th crypto transaction, which when you look at the total numbers of transactions is actually by percentage very, very, very low, uh, but it's growing and growing and growing. 
And for us, it's not a PR stunt. Like we truly understand, embrace uh, crypto transactions, and we want to make sure that we, we continue to be leaders on that front. Uh, I anticipate next year, 2023, for our crypto transactions to double. Uh, if you come to the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show next year, I think I'll be able to tell you that we're at number 25 or 30. Uh, yes, yeah, so the market uh, on the super yacht side of things specifically uh, is still extremely healthy. Um, and going to a boat show like this and being out there every day, all day long with buyers and sellers and brokers, you get a real sense of how the market's doing. Um, and I think it really reflects the success we've seen not only the last three to five months, but the last three to five years, obviously specifically the last year or two. Um, and there are uh, still more buyers than there are sellers. I think you're starting to see things slow down a little bit perhaps, uh, and that reflects probably a little bit of lightening of demand, uh, but the supply is still very light. So we are working with clients that very sincerely want to buy a boat, still can't get exactly the boat that they want, um, but it's creating these situations where the pricing uh, is still holding very firm. Uh, and we're still on the docks. I think we've probably met 50 to 60 new people we've never met before that are very serious about buying a boat. And I think they will continue to make this industry, specifically the super yacht side of things, extremely healthy. The 10 to 18 meter uh, part of the market is strong. Um, and in that range, you have motor yachts, you have, of course, sport fishing boats in America, extremely popular. You also have center consoles, which are becoming much more popular. Uh, and you have trawlers, catamarans, each of those segments are extremely healthy. Multi-haul and catamarans especially, the demand has never been higher and continues to outpace everybody's wildest expectations. Um, and I think you might see the sport fish market slow down here in the States a little bit because of the price of fuel and a few different factors. But overall, that motor yacht category and express boat category is, is very, very, very good, especially with outboards and especially with catamarans. There are many listings uh, that exist in our in industry that I wish we had. Uh, every, every single day there are broadcasts that come out from other brokers announcing their new CA. I don't believe there's ever one that comes across my inbox that I don't wish that we had. Uh, and I have this weird sense of paranoia. My wife says it's unhealthy, I think it's healthy, uh, where I really believe that our brokers and our marketing team could do a better job than anybody. Uh, and I'm constantly wishing that those CAs were ours. I am not sailing. I used to sail uh, a little bit as a kid. Uh, I have now four children of my own and my son Rivers, uh, who is seven, just asked me two days ago about getting sailing lessons. So I have a suspicion I'll probably be getting out there a little bit more with him. Uh, but I haven't been in a long time, but I am all the time on motorboats and powerboats. And with kids especially, it's much easier to just turn the uh, key and go. Uh, so if you see me on the water, which is very, very often here in Fort Lauderdale, it's usually on a boat with a key, not a boat with a rig. Oh, my last vacation, first time that my wife and I have taken a vacation since we started having children, seven or eight years ago. And right after the Monaco show, I was able to convince her to spend an additional two days in the area. She had never been to Monaco before, and we got to enjoy the show sort of enjoy the show. I was working most of the time, uh, but we really, really, really got to enjoy the Med and the surrounding towns uh, the days after the show. And it was as good and as fun and as sweet as I hoped it would be. And I think we're going to start doing that every single year. My favorite place to go on a boat, favorite place to just experience the water, be in the water, around the water, is the Bahamas. And it is uh, a cliche thing for a kid to say from South Florida, uh, but it is right over there, like 40 miles that way. It's very easy to get to, and when you go there, you are transformed. It's like you're in an aquarium or on an aquarium, and it's just a magical place. I've been going there since I was a child, and I've been fortunate because of being in the industry to go to all different parts of the world. For me, my favorite, most special place to go on a boat is still the Bahamas. Uh, I love baseball. Uh, which is a very popular sport here in America. I love football, I love basketball. Uh, and again, I have a little boy and three little girls and we are constantly uh, playing basketball, we're in the pool. And uh, it's nice because my son is just getting old enough now and I think his sisters will too. We enjoy actually just watching professional sports as well. And uh, sporting and sports is a, big, is a big part of our life. We have several uh, clients that are athletes. My very first job when I was a kid, when I was 16 years old, uh, I was a bat boy for a baseball team, which is like the kid that runs out and grabs the bat and comes back in and helps the players. Uh, so I am very, very close 
uh, to the sport of baseball. I love it. And uh, as a company, uh, we have a lot of good, active young brokers that are very involved in the community. And as a result of that, we, we have some uh, clients that are also athletes. Oh, my favorite dish has to be French toast. Uh, I don't know if it's because my wife makes it, so she makes the best French toast ever. Uh, I don't, it's that combined with like the, whatever would happen around French toast, like a good cup of coffee, some bacon, the breakfast thing, especially if it's just my wife and I at a hotel and there's French toast and all the things that go with it. I couldn't be happier, I love it. I get excited just talking about it. Uh, and I will, you, this question has probably inspired me to have French toast tomorrow. Uh, it's just my favorite thing in the world. My ideal drink anchoring in the Bahamas is a cold glass of white wine. Not rosé, which is very, very popular on a boat. I love a cold glass of Pinot Grigio or Sauvignon Blanc uh, is like my favorite thing to have on a boat uh, or perhaps a beer.